and to stop Congress from you know, threatening. So in the Chad Z 400 rates 37 says, let's trade pseudo censorship with actual censorship. Exactly. I mean, I don't know if it's pseudo censorship is the right term, but let's let's uh, let's exchange indirect attempts at censorship, whether they succeed or not is a different question. With the actual censorship, let's take them into the real power. I mean, it's nuts to me. It's nuts. I mean, to, to bring up another very, very controversial topic, it's the same as people who say, we want limited government, we want to shrink the role of government, we're, we're really worried about the militarization of the police, we're really worried about government becoming more and more powerful, intervening in more and more of our lives, but we need to build a wall, we need to militarize the border, we need, a, we need to give government as much power as it needs and grow it as big as it needs to be in order to protect us from people coming to work in America. Anyway, but that's a side issue just to upset some of you. No, if you consistently believe that the government is too big, too intrusive, too rights violating, you, the last thing you want to do is give them more power to violate rights. So the solution is to fight any attempt, any attempt, by government to influence directly or indirectly what social media does. Now, the exact opposite is happening around the world. In Australia, Britain, and Canada, and I assume in other places as well, government is considering bills that would seriously restrain what social media can do. Um, it, it, it will, you know, government there wants to protect us from offensive speech. Who the hell needs government to protect me from offensive speech? I don't want offensive speech. I can turn it off. It, it, it so reminds me of, of the discussions years ago about offensive music. Do you remember when Al Gore's wife got into this tizzy about offensive music, and I think a law was passed that all albums have to have like a rating to tell us how offensive the language being expressed on the music is so we don't get offended. Government's job is to protect my rights. My rights are not violated when I'm offended. My rights are not violated when I hear something I don't like, when I hear something I don't agree. Offensive to who? By what standard? So, so in Britain, for example, the government has a bill that they say they hope to stamp down on, among other things, this is on social media, death threats. Death threats are illegal. Yeah, that's the one thing government should do is stop death threats. You know, investigate and prosecute people who Threaten death, particularly the extent that they're serious about it. Knife sales. I guess in Britain there are a lot of stabbings. But I think knife sales are legal. Assisting people to commit suicide. The glamorization of anorexia. Vaccine skepticism. Fraudulent advertising and racist abuse directed at England's football team. Racist abuse generally is okay. But if it's directed at the football team, that's unacceptable. It's bizarre. I'm reading from an article uh, written about this bill in The Economist. <laughs> now, some of these things are already illegal. Too many of them are already illegal. England and almost all of Europe have limit serious limitations on free speech in uh, a variety of different hate speech bills, as does Canada. But this is ridiculous. What they want to do is they want to force tech companies to announce explicitly which one of these they allow and which one of these they don't. So the tech company would have a list saying, um, racist abuse directed at England's football player. We approve that. Racist abuse, uh, 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 you know, attacking a Manchester United football team. Now, we're against that. 
Uh, we don't allow that. Vaccine skepticism, we're okay with that. Fraudulent advertising, eh, we're not sure. Uh, glamorizing anorexia, we're definitely for that. And assisting people with suicide, no, we ban that. I mean, this is absurd. And how long is this, this going to be? Is there an end to it? Is there an end to the number of things you can imagine people can abuse one another through speech? And, and, and these companies should have a list, a thumbs up. I mean, I think they should have terms of service that are clear and articulate and, and objective and, and make it clear so that when I do, when I post something on Twitter, I can say, yeah, I, I'm not violating the terms of service. I'm pretty sure that this is okay. I, I'm not sure the terms of service are very clear and objective. I'm all for that, but this is absurd. And this is, you know, Rob says this is secularizing blasphemy laws. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's random blasphemy. It's like blasphemy by whose standards? Well, by the whim of the moment. And how are they going to enforce this? And if the social platform violates this, oh, they're going to be huge fines. And who's going to decide? And how many court cases are going to be filed? I mean, think about this. How many posts there are on social media every day, every second? And of course, they know that human beings are not going to be able to screen these things. So we're going to have algorithms. Well, but what if the algorithm is imperfect? Is it the company's fault that they made a mistake? Are they going to be sued? I mean, how, how bad of a... It's just... And this is clearly a violation of the property rights of the business, the ability of the business to run its business the way it sees fit, and a violation of the property rights. Uh, sorry, the, the free speech of the business. What if the business wants Lenny Bruce to perform? And Lenny Bruce has some, I don't know, insensitive jokes that violate one of these lists. Then what? They're supposed to block him? But, but they want him to perform. So their free speech is being violated. They don't get to hear the speech that they want and have contracted for because the government doesn't allow it. I mean, it's going to be arbitrary. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be ever growing, ever growing. It's never going to be limited. You know, uh, not that long ago, the most offensive speech you could make in Britain and a lot of other places was against Muslims. That now is changing. Now the biggest issue, the biggest offense you can make is to say something negative about trans, particularly in England. England, the trans issue in England is much bigger than it is even in the United States. But there's no end to how many people, who gets offended by whom, which, which intersectional group, which, uh, you know, uh, 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 oppressed group next is going to demand to be treated with the utmost respect. Comedy already, to a large extent, is dead because club owners, particularly at universities, will not bring in certain comedians because you can't offend students. Students are not allowed to hear offensive things. In Australia, under the new, this new act that they want to pass, social media users can make a complaint to Australia's independent regulator for online safety, the eSafety Commission. If a reasonable person would conclude the material in a post would cause serious harm to an Australian adult or have a serious effect on an Australian child. So anybody can complain about anything. And what's the standard of evaluation? A quote, reasonable person, who's that? Thinks that it could cause serious harm. What kind of harm? Nobody's punching. There's no physical damage. So is this emotional harm, spiritual harm, ideological harm? Maybe the guy's being converted to capitalism. Whoa, that is real harm. The act encourages proactive action and behavior by establishing a wide range set of basic online safety expectations. Safety. 
Safety from what? From ideas. Safety from what? From language. Safety from what? From expression. This is exactly what free speech is here to protect us from. The government determine what is harmful speech. The government determining what is acceptable. The government determining what is truth. This is the misinformation. I mean, the government determining what is truth. The government. The source of so much misinformation. But the government is positioning itself as a Catholic church, determining what is okay, what is blasphemous, what is not blasphemous, and how private individuals should be able to behave or not behave in their own private spaces. Uh, Canada has a similar bill, online street, you know, a uh, proposal to regulate also for safety. It's all about safety. Protect people from speech the government doesn't like or a reasonable person. So while many of us don't like what Twitter does or don't like what Facebook does, the thing we should resist more than anything is government involvement. The thing we should resist more than anything is the government getting involved in what can and cannot be said, what is acceptable and what is not, what is harmful and what is not, what should be blocked and what is not. Because that's the end of debate. That is the end of controversy, see? And that's the end of radicalism. That's the end of changing the world. There's no way to change the world unless we can speak. There's no way to make the world a better place unless we can speak. The whole purpose is to silence opposition. And at the end of the day, you know, just from a selfish perspective, the biggest opposition is us. Is you know, capitalists. <laughs> Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.